Hey guys, hi. So in this video, we are going to start with two pointers technique. Okay, the common misconception which all of us have is that two pointers is more like a data structure and algorithms. So it's not a data structure, nor it's an algorithm. Okay, it's more like an optimization technique, just like binary search. And we use this technique a lot in order to solve complicated problems. Okay, the main USP of two pointers is that it is mainly used to convert a problem, a complex problem, which is solvable in let's suppose O of n square of O of n cube. And it help us solve this problem in linear time O of n. So that's how we are going to see in all the problems and all the techniques which we are going to study in this uh, two pointers, right? Just one more uh, for introduction here. So two pointers generally involves more than two or more pointers. Uh, let's suppose if I have an array and there are some elements here in the array. So two pointer technique involve two different pointers. Uh, like it could be a virtual pointer or it could be anything like on paper it will we will see it as a pointer only two pointers which will be pointing towards some index index or some value which are present in an array and then we will play around with both of these pointers like we will probably move them in this direction move the other in some other direction and we'll try to solve a problem using this technique right uh, it generally works on linear data structures only so make sure key you are you are applying it on linear data structure before using this technique Okay, so this basically creates a good foundation for us in order to understand two pointers technique. Let, let's try to understand it via an example, a very simple example. So let's suppose we are given uh, a string S in the question and it has been asked whether the string S is in palindrome or not. Right, so for example, if we are given this particular string A, B, C, D, C, B, A. This is the kind of palindrome. Okay. So the property of a palindrome is it should be symmetric around the center, right? So if I write down here, A, B, C, D, C, B, A, in this fashion, the whole string is actually symmetric around this particular character D. It could be possible key, uh, the string is actually is having even uh, like even number of characters. So A, B, C, C, B, A. This is also a kind of palindrome here. The Symmetry will be lying at this point CBA and ABC. So both of them are symmetric around the center. Now the question is we need to find out whether the string is palindrome or not using the two-pointer technique, right? So we will start with the basics only. So we know for a palindrome every character at a position like let's suppose if we take up this character A the, the position with respect to the center and the position of an character exactly opposite to to the in the other center will be same right for example this a and this a should be similar why this a and this a should be similar because they both are at a distance of three from the center so we know for a fact that if this property is getting followed by a string it should be palindrome in nature so how can we solve this now let us suppose that we start the problem via two different pointers which are pointing towards two different indexes and starting from the start and end so a b c d c b a let's suppose that we are starting p1 from this point and we are starting p2 from this point and the algorithm will follow as we will first of all compare the values which are given in p1 and p2 and if both of them matches then we keep moving towards the center so this pointer will move towards the center which means it will move towards the right and this pointer will move towards the center which means it will move towards the left right so the algorithm will follow such as p1 will be at the start p2 will be at the end and we'll keep comparing all the values so first of all we'll compare if p1 is equal equal to p2 or not if this condition follows then we move into the other direction which basically says increment p1 and decrement p2 else if this condition does not satisfy which basically means it's not a palindrome right if this a and this a is not equal then it's not a palindrome right so else we will return false and if all the elements follow up just like this then we will return true 
obviously there will be a ending condition here as well the ending condition should be while p1 is not equal to p2 if p1 is equal to p2 which basically means we have reached the center and at this point both of them will be equidistant right so this is a valid palindrome so if you see here we are using two pointer technique a very trivial problem is what we are solving in this case we are using two pointer technique wherein one pointer is starting from the beginning and one pointer is starting from the end right and they are both moving towards the center unless and until we are seeing a diff if we don't get any diff then which this basically states that uh, our given string is a palindrome in nature right so this kind of two pointer technique is actually also known as index based point uh, technique we'll go uh, about index based uh, two pointer technique in later sessions but yeah so let us take up one more example here let us suppose that we are given an array and not just an array let's let's suppose we are given a sorted array a sorted array is given to us let's suppose the sorted array is something like this right and we have to remove all duplicates from this sorted array now how can we solve this problem you may pause the video right now and think uh, about this problem for a minute and then we'll come back and resume the video so here also if we see the general pattern which is following up is we are given a linear data structure which is an array and all the values are present in sorted format so one two two seven double eight and nine all of them are given in this fashion only so can we use a two-pointer technique here yes we can how can we use a two-pointer technique is what if we keep on moving one pointer towards the end and keep the other pointer restricted to the sorted zone only not sorted zone basically the unique value zone so let's suppose i have two pointers p1 and p2 and p1 will only mark territory of all unique values and p2 will be our running pointer what what do you mean by running pointer running pointer is something which will keep on moving in every iteration right so in all of these kind of problems we will have one running pointer which is keep on moving in every iteration and then the other pointer which is marking some kind of territory right which is actually marking the scope of our answers we are going to do a lot of questions uh, on the similar format so uh, like make sure you understand this one so p1 will actually be marking all the values which are unique in nature right so let's suppose if I start P1 from this point and if I start P2 from this point, P2 will be moving in every iteration. And P1, what it does is it will only move if we receive a unique element. Right. How can we achieve this? Let's suppose if we compare 1 and 2. They both are not equal in nature. So we will increment P1 and P2. Now P1 will come at this position and P2 will come at this position. Right. Now if we see here, P1 and P2 both are equal. So we don't need to increment p2 because sorry we don't need to increment p1 because if we increment p1 the array will not be unique in nature anymore right so what we do we will skip this for like skip this particular iteration and move p2 to the other variable which is 7. now at this point we are giving a unique character right because p1 and p2 are not equal so how do we include 7 in our scope we actually make a swap we actually make a swap here with this 2 and this 7 and the array will look something like this 1, 2, 7, 2, 8, 8 and 9. Now P2 will obviously move to this and P1, P1 will be pointing towards this. In the next iteration we see okay 8 is coming. Now 8 is not equal to 7 which basically means we have to include 8 into the current scope. So what we do we basically swap this 2 with this 8. So the array will look something like this now. P2 will be here and my P1 will be here now. Right. At this point, we again compare P1 and P2. Since P1 and P2 are equal, we do nothing here and we increment P2 to the next iteration, which is this. So now again, we see 9 and 8. They both are not equal in nature, right? P1 and P2. So we make a swap. Now, how do we swap? We actually swap this 2 with this 9. So at this position, we get 1, 2, 7, 8, 9, 2, and sorry 8 and 2 so this is going to be my unique values and this is going to be the garbage which i don't want to include into my array okay so this is just another problem which we can solve by two pointer again repeating the logic here 
what we are doing here in this case we are using one pointer to mark the scope of the answer and the other as a running pointer right the logic will differentiate all the time and what in like basically this this kind of technique is also uh, very much popular and we are going to use it a lot in in the upcoming sessions but here what we are doing we are marking the scope with p1 so p1 every time will remain constant at this position and we will only increment p1 whenever we include a new unique value so whenever we see a unique value we will swap the unique value with the next value which is present to p1 right and this in this manner we will keep on building the unique array and just like finish wipe out the garbage part which is not present here now this point this particular technique is also known as slow and fast pointer we are going to use this technique a lot in the upcoming session so yeah so cool guys this is uh, the introduction for two pointers in the next video we are going to see when to apply two pointers and what are the different patterns of question we are going to see in two pointers as well as we'll try to code out this particular problem sorted array thank you